Okay, let's begin. This is a real world vlog test comparing the DJI Pocket 3 with the DJI Action 4. And honestly, while I expect that the Pocket 3 is gonna outperform the Action 4 in a lot of these tests, there's still a fundamental reason why by if I could only have one of these cameras, I would pick the Action 4 every day of the week. And it's tied into my biggest disappointment with the Pocket 3 and we'll We'll get to that towards the end, but for now, let's start by discussing some fundamental differences between these cameras, because you can quite clearly tell just from looking at this footage that they're very, very different. They're not both action cameras, so though some people might think they are. The Action 4 is an action camera. The Pocket 3 is not an action camera. It's what I'll call a sort of cinematic, capable vlog, gimbal part powered camera. They're very different. The Action 4 is your standard, typically small, boxy, GoPro action camera style that we're used to. And it has a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, which while big for an action camera and means that the Action 4 gives some of the best low light performance that we've seen in an action camera, that sensor is still tiny compared to the 1 inch sensor that's in the Pocket 3. And you'll also notice another big fundamental difference the focal lengths are hugely different. The Action 4 has an incredibly wide focal length and a fixed focus, whereas the Pocket 3 has got a 20 millimeter equivalent focal length, which you can see is a much more natural focal length. Um, it's very versatile because it's wide enough that, you know, I've got my arm not even fully outstretched here, but you can see my entire head and my shoulders. It's a nice sort of size for doing a walk and talk. It's not as distant. As the, as the Action 4, and also, combined with that one inch sensor, you'll see I'm getting background blur. If I bring the pocket into my face, you can see the autofocus shifts, and the background goes out of focus. If I do that with the Action 4, let's see, if I bring, th that, this is the, <laughs> the same distance from my face, you can see the Action 4, uh, I basically go out of focus because it can't close focus. So that's a big difference between, between, these two cameras. I'm going to flip them around a second and you can see the difference in uh, just stabilization as I walk along here. So one, two, three, that rotates the gimbal. So I'm going to walk forward here and then I'm going to run. I've just noticed that my zip has been knocking against the Action 4 microphone, which is why you've been hearing this noise. Anyway, suffice to say, the quality from this microphone is fantastic, but I'm mostly going to be using the audio from the Action 4 for this video. You can see they both, they both stabilize very, very well, but they both stabilize using two completely different methods. The Pocket 3 uses a mechanical gimbal, and the Action 4 uses electronic stabilization. Now, why is this significant? Well, there's only one of these cameras I would drop on the ground and not to be too worried about it getting damaged and that's the action for it has no moving parts but that's also its disadvantage because to stabilize it has to use electronic stabilization it has to crop it in the image and move it around it means it needs lots of light to stabilize whereas the action whereas sorry the pocket three on the other hand uses an electronic gimbal which stabilizes electronically which means you're seeing the full 20 millimeter focal length, not a cropped in view. Now, if you don't like the really wide look of the Action 4, you can use a linear mode on that camera. You can kind of crop in the 20 millimeter equivalent. I think by default it's only 11 millimeters. It's really, really wide. But if you do that, if you switch the Action 4 to a cropped in view, you actually lose a lot of quality because all that does is it crops the sensor of the camera. So you're losing detail, you're losing quality, and it's just not going to look quite as good. The Pocket does give you a very different type of footage for B-roll like this. It's much more natural, whereas with the Action 4, you're getting that crazy warped look. Okay, let's go down and look at some leaves. It is autumn after all. How close can we get to these leaves with the Pocket? That's pretty close. It's got a pretty close focus, whereas with the Action, very, very different type of shot. And I can tilt the gimbal up on the pocket, which will give me a nice shot like that. Ooh. 
let's talk about color for a second because I've been shooting both these cameras and what I think is the best quality sense for both of them. It's been using the D-Log M color profile, which is a flat color profile, gives you the most color information to work with in post and theory results in the best image. Now I've also reduced the sharpness and the noise reduction to minus one on both of these because I think by default, uh, the default sharpening is just too sharp and I actually don't mind a little bit of noise. I prefer a little bit of noise to that over-processed noise reduction look that makes everything look a little bit plasticky. Now, whew, doing this while walking uphill. To give you an idea what this footage looks like straight out of camera, I'll remove the color grade. Phew. There we go, that's it. Straight out of camera. You can see it's pretty dull. Add the color grade, add the color grade back. Phew. There we go. Okay, so let's test one really key difference between these two cameras. And that is hopefully going to be the low light performance. I'm gonna go walk in onto the trees here in a forest. That is the worst possible conditions for an action camera is getting, going in under trees. There's loads of detail. The light quality is really low and the light color is pretty nasty as well. So in we go onto the trees and let's see which of these performs better. So the light source is currently behind me. So it's just darkness on my face. I'm interested to see what these two cameras prioritize in terms of exposure. Okay, that's me in onto the trees. I'm gonna spin around here a little bit. So you're getting the light now on my face. I'm guessing there's gonna be a significant difference between these two in terms of the quality. If there isn't, I will be sorely disappointed. <laughs> Let's walk a little bit further in. Just interesting to see how the two cameras handle the fact that it's backlit right now. Okay. Let's spin around. Right, that's me in, in onto the trees. And this is a scenario where lots of people buy action cameras and are disappointed because they try to make camping videos and they go under trees and it doesn't look great. But... Are we getting a nice clean image from the Pocket 3? I can't quite see it because um, the screen's small, but it looks, <laughs> it looks like it might be cleaner. Uh, I'm just walking up on a street light here for another test. How's that? Okay. Let's walk back out of the forest and hopefully this gives you a good idea of the differences between these two cameras just in terms of what they look like and the type of imagery they create. Um, and as I said, I see them as being two fundamentally different types of camera. Uh, the pocket will let you get that more natural look image. It's gonna look like it's shot with a much larger camera, with a more standard camera. It's not gonna look like it's shot with an action camera. I suppose the best comparison would be, if you remember the Sony ZV-1, really popular vlogging camera came out a couple of years ago. Oh, bit of wind's picked up. How's the audio with that wind? Yeah, Sony ZV-1, really popular vlogging camera. I really liked it, it had a one inch sensor, it was fantastic, but it had a fundamental problem. And the fundamental problem was that the stabilization was electronic and was terrible. So you could not walk and talk with it um, without it cropping in your, it, the crop was like this, so the ZV-1. So I didn't keep it for that reason. And in many ways, the Pocket 3 is like a Sony ZV-1 on a stick, except it also shoots better quality slow motion because this will do 100 frames per second in 4K, whereas the ZV-1 would not. After all of that comparison, which I'm pretty sure will show you that the Pocket 3 has nicer looking footage, both a more natural looking focal length and much better uh, low light performance. And I haven't even touched on any of the other features that this camera has. I haven't touched really on the different things you can do with the gimbal, the fact that you can do motion tracking, the fact that this entire time this camera has been tracking my face. Do you see that? It's locked onto my face. No matter where I put my face, the camera points directly at it. Whereas with the Action 4, I'm just relying on the real wide angle lens, ensuring that I'm in. Okay, with all those nice things I've said about the Pocket 3, why then would I choose the Action 4 if I could only have one of these two cameras? And the answer is quite simple.
I make videos outdoors <laughs> in places where it quite often rains and the Pocket 3 is not weather sealed and it is my biggest disappointment with this camera because there are weather sealed gimbals out there. I would have loved it if the Pocket 3 was weather sealed because it would have meant I could have used it as my sole camera for outdoor videos. But as is, I can't. I would have to bring along my Action 4 with me as a backup camera for wet weather. So if you're someone who makes outdoor videos, you might want to take that into consideration. The Pocket 3 is absolutely amazing. Otherwise, I love it and I'm going to use it as part of my filmmaking kit, but only when the weather is good. Hopefully you found this video useful. Hopefully it helps you make a decision about whether or not the Pocket 3 is for you. And if you find it useful, please consider subscribing. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of these cameras. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.